What's good everybody, it's Cocopop430 here, and welcome back to the channel. So back when I was a kid, I loved watching Animal Planet after getting back from elementary school. Shows like The Most Extreme, The Crocodile Hunter, Prehistoric Park, and Weird, True, and Freaky were constantly on my television screen. They were often fun and usually informational when teaching kids things about nature and the wild and all that stuff. However, it started to get a bit weird during the late 2000s and early 2010s, when Animal Planet shows began to take a pretty interesting turn. Bigfoot walks up and pours milk in it! <laughs> <laughs> now we would get shows like Monster Inside Me, The Haunted, I'm Alive, and Finding Bigfoot flooding the Animal Planet time slots whenever I got back home. Gone were the days of the Crocodile Hunter, and television as a whole was going into this weird era of television, swarming with shows that probably shouldn't even be considered when it comes to a channel titled Animal Planet. But one series always stood out to be whatever going through the TV shows during this era, and that one show was named Lost Tapes. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. Lost Tapes was a show that was at the right place at the right time when it came to my early childhood. This show at Ghost Adventures. Is your mask on? No. Oh, <laughs> Are you okay? Define my transition into middle school. Watching what random crypto of the week was going to be for Lost Tapes or what shenanigans Zack, Nick, and Aaron would get into when investigating a supposed haunted asylum, or a haunted restaurant, or a haunted hospital, or a haunted brothel. Remember that episode? That was such a weird episode. What, what, what even was that? Was it you? You're very pretty. Was it you? You're... okay. Maybe I am disgusting. Anyway, what was I talking about in the first place? Oh yeah, Lost Tapes. This show ran from October 30th, 2008, all the way till November 9th, culminating in three seasons with 34 episodes total. This show is mainly structured in found footage mockumentaries in the style of something like Cloverfield or The Blair Ridge Project. And this series was created by a company named Go Go Lucky Entertainment. These episodes were usually super, super low budget. It would often have sections of the main story only to then cut off with some random facts of the day that sort of relate to the episode, but for most of them, they're just used as fodder to fill in time for the show. For this video, we are going to go through every single Lost Tapes episode and break them down by each season because my god, there's over 11 hours of content to go through. So sit back and relax as I go on a monster hunting journey on my own to see if this theory still holds up to this day. So make sure to hit that like button and comment down below if you remember this show and what episodes you can remember. Also, maybe if I hit a thousand subs, I could do something like this for Ghost Adventures, who knows? Going through 25 plus seasons sounds like an insane task to do. But if you're interested in something like that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get started with Season 1. Lost Tapes Chupacabra What happened? Where did Chupacabra go? Got go? <laughs> so first up on the series premiere of Lost Tapes is the episode titled Chupacabra and uh yeah it's it's an episode all right I mean my god it's all about a family who wants to cross the border into the US only to then get killed by the Chupacabra and then all of a sudden it goes into border patrol information literally border patrol propaganda it's honestly insane how much info there is on the border patrol then there is about the Chupacabra. Like, I get it. They use that fake uh, video about the Chupacabra that was debugged to be, what, a mangy coyote? We all know that. But the fact that this episode has nothing going on for the entire 20 minutes is kind of sad, not gonna lie, because you can do so much more with the idea of the Chupacabra. Like, maybe have this family be on, like, fighting the Chupacabra or something because their livestock keeps getting eaten by it and the grandma's like, El Diablo Chupacabra, aye! Or something like that. Something, I don't know, make it more interesting than what we got with the Border Patrol. I mean, my goodness, this was a horrible episode. One out of ten. Probably the worst episode in the entire Lost Tapes catalog. I'm not gonna lie. But luckily, we reached rock bottom almost instantly. So, 
At least everything else should be better, right? I learned more about the Border Patrol than I did anything about Mexican culture, or even about the Trooper Copper itself. Like, what are we doing here? Just a really bad first episode. Lost tapes. Bigfoot. I am the Lorifax, and I speak for the trees. Now this is the episode everyone remembers. I honestly thought that this was the first episode of the series, since my mind blocked out the memory of me watching Dora's parents get eaten by the Chupacabra. Too bad Diego wasn't there. The Bigfoot episode is all about a park ranger named Rachel Glenn attempting to stop illegal bear poaching in California. They even give fun, factual, I suppose factual, information about illegal bear poaching, as apparently bear parts are sold on the black market for prices higher than gold and heroin. Like what the hell are they even using the bear parts for in the black market? I don't want to look it up, or else I might be put on an FBI watch list or something. I mean, that, that'd be pretty rough. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. The villain of the story isn't even Bigfoot, but some freaky libertarian who's attempting to kill some bears to sell on the black market. Why was this dude stalking this woman in the middle of the forest? Uh, let's not think about that, shall we? Bigfoot in this episode feels more like a protector of the forest, unlike in the later seasons, which I'll get to later. But here, Bigfoot is speaking through the trees and even massacring poachers in his free time. Just living his life, honestly. The ending to this episode is pretty crazy, considering this was airing on Animal Planet, but overall, a much better second episode when comparing it to the Chupacabra, that's for sure. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Lost Tapes. Monster of Monterey. It is spoken! It has told us the way! It didn't say anything. The Monster of Monterey episode immediately starts with factually wrong info as the Japanese fisherman captured a decaying whale and not a dead prehistoric dinosaur. I don't know why, even as a kid, I already knew that was a whale immediately. I don't know how people can mistake it for like a dead prehistoric dinosaur, but regardless, The Monster of Monterey is a very boring episode. It's about a journalist taking a boat across the world, and she's at the final stretch of her journey, only for everything to go wrong as she encounters a dangerous unknown sea creature. You never get to see the plesiosaur until the end of the episode, but I feel like all her boat safety in this episode, it feels really wrong. Maybe it's just me binge watching this one TikTok user who is sailing across the ocean, and honestly, I would trust that man with my life over somebody who just kind of yeeted into the ocean and got eaten by a dinosaur. She smacked into the poor giant Leoplorodon and just wanted to take her to Candy Mountain. But yeah, there isn't much to say about this episode. It's boring. It's forgettable. Let's move on. Like her boat did at the end of the episode. I'll give it a 3 out of 10. Lost Tapes. Swamp Creature. Season 1 blesses us with two Bigfoot episodes, and as a child watching this show, I never knew this was supposed to be about Bigfoot. I thought since they called it a skunk ape, I thought it was just some weird demonic fusion of ape and skunk. The Swamp Creature episode is set during the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, and wow, to think that the hurricane was nearly 16 years ago, that's insane to think about. Also in the episode, the Squatch goes by they them. They got a woke Bigfoot in 2008. The professor and her assistant get lost because the crocodile decides to be a menace and steal their backpack containing all their equipment. The scientist in this story is just so inept, she's worse than the journalist from the Monterey episode. But the star of the show aren't even the main characters, nor is it the skunk ape. It's a local yokel named Bud Ray. Doctor wants you to bring your camera down there and shoot something. Bud Ray is the highlight of this episode, as he's the only ray of hope these two idiots have in getting out of the swamp. He even goes toe to toe against the attacking Bigfoot. The only reason why the Bigfoot attacked him in the first place is because he assisted to the scientists destroyed their eggs. Is it like this weird fusion of Reptile and Bigfoot? And... I have no idea actually. I mean, I never really got the skunk ape lore to begin with. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know, it's dumb, but the episode itself is very entertaining. Think of it like a Z movie killer croc film. Bud Ray could protect me any day. I'm giving Swamp Creature 7 out of 10, a pretty entertaining episode. Lost Tapes, Oklahoma Octopus. Ah, uh, Oklahoma. Who doesn't love Oklahoma? Wait, 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 wait. Where on earth would a giant octopus be living and thriving in fuck <coughs> Oklahoma? I mean, the lake they filmed this episode on does not look deep enough for a giant octopus, let alone anything that could kill these characters. There's only one lake deep enough in Oklahoma, and it's part of a dam. This episode has nothing going on. The characters are all kind of jerks to each other, especially Tyler. Oh my god, I hate Tyler so much. Tyler! Have a good night. Thank you for... 
The only interesting thing about the Oklahoma Octopus episode, you all aren't watching the Oklahoma Octopus episode. Another bland episode from season one. I mean, what am I going to give it? Like a, like a four out of ten? Yeah, four out of ten. Fine. Lost tapes, Devil Dragon. What a name, Devil Dragon. That's a great name for a title. I ain't gonna lie. Devil Dragon is all about a fake Bear Grylls wannabe that gets lost in the Australian rainforest is now being hunted by a lost giant species of Komodo Dragon. I mean, maybe he should have attempted to drink his own piss to keep the Megalania away from him. Who knows? Also, when the dude gets bitten by the venomous Megalania, wouldn't the bite size be much bigger since it's supposed to be like a giant 30-foot lizard? How could he not see it fly at him to come up to attack him? It was right next to him. Get it together, Grill Bears. You're supposed to be an expert on this. The poison should have killed him instantly, but poor dude couldn't even survive two days. For shame, Grill Bears. For shame. This episode was alright. It felt suspenseful as the bitter end was slowly creeping near for poor Grill Bears, as this was one of the better season one episodes. 6.5 out of 10. At least it kept me entertained. Lost tapes. Cave demons. Cave Demon sucks. Do you want me to go more into detail about it? Cave Demon sucks. There's your review. Well, okay, anyway, I guess I have to go into some detail. Giant bats invade the Tora Bora cave system in Afghanistan as U.S. Army soldiers are in a fight for their lives against mythical bats. Honestly, if you want a good movie or show about people uniting to fight against creatures in a cave, go watch The Descent. At least the effects on the creatures are well done in that film. This episode probably would have worked if we were like in a later season. I'm just shocked just how disappointed I've been with the first season so far. The nostalgia glasses were real growing up. My god. 2 out of 10, whatever, who cares. Lost tapes. Death Raptor. When it comes to the name Death Raptor, I thought for sure this is going to be about an unknown prehistoric velociraptor tearing up a random forest in the middle of nowhere. Unfortunately, I was sorely mistaken as this episode is about a giant owl man that's in California. Wait, what? As a kid, I always thought that this was set in England because the first two talking was a British dude talking about the owl man. The only place that resembles that setting is a giant church down in LA. So all this time, I've had a giant owl man sucking around Los Angeles and nobody told me about this? Maybe he could play center for the Lakers to help LeBron. I don't know. The Lit Owl Man was one of the most memorable season 1 episodes for me. Not because it was the best episode from this season, but because the ending had me and my brother laughing at seeing this old woman get owl napped by the creature. And you see this little random PNG of like a, of a wing, and it's so funny to see. So it's an old woman. Hazel, where are you just her, just her getting snatched up. I don't know why, but that scene was so funny. I just couldn't take it seriously. The telepathic owl wants its prey, but overall it was a mid episode. Nothing too atrocious, but also nothing special. The British Mothman is just a creep. 5 out of 10. Lost Tapes. Megaconda. The Megaconda episode, yay! Uh, 4 out of 10. There's really, really nothing I can say about this episode. I'm trying really hard to think of something. I even have, like, notes right next to me, and I I put nothing. I mean, literally, just, like, one sentence saying, the only highlight of this one was seeing Spooty get flung up into the air and eaten by the giant anaconda. Other than that, this one was pretty forgettable. And the security guard was the only smart one wanting to bail and get the hell out of there. Yeah, 4 out of 10. This one was just... Boring again. Lost tapes. Thunderbird. The average Chody Hawk demographic during the 2000s are here to invade private property to get a sick skating spot, only to realize that they're being stalked by a gigantic Thunderbird. Hell, it's nearly the size of a battleship. Oh wait, wrong bird. For some reason, they show a random fact about how 1,500 kids are hospitalized from skating incidents every year. Like, cool. Oh my god, what are we doing here, Lost Tapes? Seriously, what are we doing here? God, this season sucks. No more pointless inductions. Okay, Lost Tapes, like, 3 out of 10 for Thunderbird. Lost Tapes. Skinwalker. The Committee for Skeptical Inquiry? 
where the hell are they fighting these people for these episodes? This episode is hilarious. Seeing the farmer get mad at his son for wanting to get a proper education and try to get a good job. This feels like just the average Red State family household to be honest. This is another one I remember vividly as a kid because of the intro showing the werewolf. That shot is used like four times during the show and each time it reminds me of this mid 2000s werewolf horror movie that I can never remember the name of but it was so goofy. One scene where the dude was fist fighting a wolf, a werewolf or something. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, please Please again comment below because I swear I can't remember that movie's name. But this episode felt super rushed to me, but was more enjoyable to sit down through. And the ending wasn't too shabby either. One of the better season 1 episodes. I'm giving this one a 5.5 out of 10. Not too bad. Lost tapes. Mothman. The creature! Oh no, the creature! For this episode, I can't believe that they used the same creature suit that was used for the Owlman. Like, hold up, at least try to make them seem different. But this episode is actually pretty unique, as the main character records and films the events before the Silver Bridge collapse. All are being drawn to the bridge by a mysterious creature shown lurking by the bridge. This episode feels pretty original. It feels like one of the later season episodes. But Roy's not our guy, as he's deemed insane by literally everyone around him, including his own wife, and is even questioned by the cops on his involvement of the bridge, because he was at the scene of the crime. Nancy! Seems to be a commotion behind this lady's window. Right. It looks like someone may be attempting a rescue. Can we get any closer on that? Yes! This one at least attempted to be different compared to the other episodes during season 1. So for that, I had to give it props. It was actually pretty unique. And again, the way they do it is less is more. So like with this episode and Bigfoot, they really really shine when attempting to go that route. So for this one, I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10. One of the best episodes of season one. Lost tapes. Death worm. Billy Carr getting into an argument with his girlfriend over. She's like, you need to get rid of those worms, Lee Carr. <laughs> But the worms are part of me, my love. I've been cultivating them for 45 years. Carly, I'll tell you what I told my last 30 exes. If it comes down to you and the worms, I pick the worms every time. What can I say about death worms? Uh, it's just tremors. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about this one. It's just tremors. But, you know, the story is about a three-day, 500-mile trek through the Gobi Desert, which doesn't sound like the safest idea. And with no tracking or proper food to help the main characters, this seems like something that you can be sued for because you should have better, like, checkpoints? Anything to help these people in case they get lost inside the Gobi Desert? Like, what are we doing here? It's just a snooze fest with nothing going on, and it's just tremors. Like, I have to repeat this because it is so dull, I nearly fell asleep to the Earthworm episode. Earthworm Jim could never put me to sleep. 2 out of 10, maybe even 1 out of 10. You know what? No, 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 2 out of 10, 2 out of 10. It's not as worse as the Chupacabra episode. <gasps> no worms on the bed! Lost tapes. Hellhound. Late again, Dib. And what is it this time? Vampire babies or Bigfoot mailmen? Dogs! Chasing me! So many dogs! We have finally made it to the season 1 season finale, and this episode is titled Hellhound. But I think they put the entire budget into this one episode, because the opening has more energy and effort put into it than most of the episodes shown during the first season. But this episode is all about a goth girl baiting some faith gods into doing a ritual, sacrificing them one by one, till eventually nothing is left but her and her vicious hellhound. Even though they did try something unique, it just kind of fell flat to me. They kept using the same weirdo from the Committee of Skeptical Inquiry to explain this stuff to me. Get this man out of here and get me some real researchers over here, like the one dude with the crazy hair. Don't ask what he's up to. I can appreciate the effort for this episode, but it ain't no Swamp Creature or Mothman, that's for sure. At least the finale of the first season went out with a bang, and hopefully the later season can keep up with the same energy. I'm giving this one a 6.5 out of 10. Don't get rattled. Animal Planet's Close Shave Week will return. I'm not going to criticize season 1 too harshly as this was the startup season 
And although it had a lot of dud episodes like the Mega Conda, Oklahoma Octopus, Chupacabra, Cave Demons, and even a ripoff of Tremors, Season 1 also had flashes of potential and what the series could actually become with episodes like Bigfoot, Mothman, Hellhound, and even Swamp Creature. With Animal Planet giving the series a proper budget this time, I'm sure they can learn from their better episodes to make sure Season 2 is a superior season. Lost Tapes Vampire We warn you, what you are about to see is disturbing. I'm not gonna lie, Season 2 has been a major improvement over Season 1. The first episode of Season 2 to me is a bit confusing because this is supposed to be about vampires, but to be honest, they kind of act like werewolves during this episode. And even look at them, they're all furry, they have a nest. I mean, have you seen a vampire with a nest before? I get it like a lair, like a coffin, but like a nest? This is really, really interesting to me how they interpreted the vampire lore. But you know what, in this episode, it kind of works, I'm not gonna lie. But for me growing up, I always thought that they accidentally mixed up this episode with another season 2 episode that we'll get to later. The House of Crisis hits a poor family hard, and now they must fend off a horde of vampires or else risk becoming one of them. Seeing people getting killed left and right made this episode leagues above the rest of the previous season. The acting has improved, the scares have improved, and even the costumes have majorly improved. Vampires was a fun watch. There's a reason why this episode is the highest rated episode on IMDb, and for good reason. This one is probably the best in the entire series. Even if you're not a fan of the found footage episodes, I would highly recommend at least watching this episode in particular, as it's one of the best. I'm giving Vampire a 9 out of 10. Lost Tapes Lizard The Demon Democrats stole the blood of a poor dog, used to commit heinous acts against convict Trump and his super sexy followers like Alex Jones. Wait, 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 this was a part of the script. Who's the freak that added this? Well, anyway, Lizard Man starts to get the usual suspects when it comes to the schizophrenic cryptozoologist like Lauren Coleman. Finally, Lost Tapes is getting the big budget people on the show for once. This one, although being inferior to the previous episode, is still pretty good in my opinion, as seeing the Lizard Man go one on one with a firefighter and seeing how the firefighter actually kills a Lizard Man is kind of crazy. I mean, my god, he just butchers the hell out of this poor lizard. This dude really went to work against this giant lizard. Oh my goodness. 6.75 out of 10. Lost tapes. Southern Sasquatch. Say Bigfoot shows up. Seuss, be Bigfoot. Out of every episode that I've seen from Lost Tapes, the Southern Sasquatch episode is probably the one my brother and I most vividly remember when it comes to season two of Lost Tapes. I believe this is probably one of the most recognizable episodes and what got me hooked onto this series in the first place. Rednecks are trying to impress their city boy future brother-in-law and they decide to go hunting deep in the Arkansas forest to initiate him into the family deer hunting business. The episode ain't nothing too special, but it's one of my personal favorites since you can see the squads killing these guys and a real sense of suspense and dread as they slowly get picked off one by one. I mean, honestly, they did have this coming. They did draw first blood as they immediately saw the Bigfoot and just shot at him. Even when one of them said it could have been a person, so if they accidentally murdered another hunter, that would have been pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie. Are we sure that's not a person? Damn it! Leave up! You gotta warn us when you get to fire off your weapon! I think I got it. But Bigfoot eventually gets his revenge and makes for a very entertaining episode. And I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Lost tapes. Werewolf. She's got a bony ass. And fat thighs. And bad skin. Fire! So like I said with the first episode of Season 2, how I felt like the Vampire episode switched with another episode coming in Season 2, well this is it. This is the episode that I believe got mixed up with the first episode when it comes to the werewolf and vampire stuff. Because I swear, 
the villain in this story acts more like a vampire compared to an actual werewolf. The story starts similar to the vampire episode where a series of murders are running rampant in a local city. Now, a local journalist is tagging along with two police officers who have discovered where the potential murderer is bringing his victims to, but only to discover a twist of the century. Back away from the girl. Why? Get away from her! Back away! Yeah, I don't really mind the red herring that they thought the dude was at first the murderer. I didn't mind the twist, but again, this episode feels like it got switched with the vampire episode. Because if you switch the sections of experts talking to each other about, you know, the werewolf lore and the vampire lore, if you switch those two things, I feel like there wouldn't be a difference in the episode's plot and ending. But don't get me wrong though, I still enjoyed the episode, although there was no feeling of actual werewolf content going on here, I'm giving this one a 7.25 out of 10. Pay respects to my poor cameraman, he didn't deserve to get mauled like that. Lost Tapes, Death Crawler. This is why if you're stranded on an unknown island, the first thing not to do is never attempt to be dumb and play with the wildlife. Married researchers get stuck on an island that is filled with dangerous centipedes that aren't big enough to be seen coming directly at them, but are just tiny enough to sneak attack this dude. I mean, my god, it was coming directly at him and he didn't notice, but considering this was to be a giant centipede, again, how do the people not notice this? The wife in this story is the actual MVP of this episode. When her husband gets beaten by the centipedes, she's on a mission to hack and slash all the centipedes piece by piece and get her husband to safety. It's alright, it's just that everything is so dark, you can never really get a chance to see the centipedes, only for a few moments when they're surrounding the tent. Oh well, regardless, this is probably one of the first mediocre episodes of Season 2, and to take this long, I'll take it to be honest. I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10. Lost Tapes, White River Monster. I never understood this episode at all as a kid. Was the White River Monster meant to be a giant fish? Or is it supposed to be a lost species of plesiosaur in this random little river in the middle of Arkansas? I guess the theory is that the creature can survive on feeding on the huge catfish, but regardless, these Razorback fans are here in the river to bare hand grab some major catfish. The old man named Earl in this episode legit sounds like that one general hog from Samurai Jack and I can't unhear it now when I compare the two. Looking up info for this monster, it resembles an elephant seal and even a manatee? I mean, I guess we're just throwing straws at anything now, but imagining an evil flesh-eating manatee sounds so stupid, but you know what? It's so funny. Just to think about that, that's what's killing these poor old people, that all these people are getting bullied and eaten by a gigantic manatee. Shout out to the White River Monster for overturning a Confederate warship during the Civil War. Some even claim the White River Monster might have affected the Civil War. At that time, the White River was a major transportation route, and according to local lore, the monster was believed to be responsible for overturning a Confederate munitions boat. There's more of a chance of the River Monster being real than the South ever rising again, so at least the monster has that going for him. I'm giving this one a 5.5 out of 10. R.I.P. My name was Earl. Lost tapes. Jersey Devil. The fact that the Jersey Devil's lore, with the mother wanting the 13th child to be the devil, was made up by Benjamin Franklin, did the fame of man who he had beef with, really blew my mind. The Jersey Devil is probably one of the most iconic monsters in American folklore, and I can't lie, I enjoy the monster's design in this story, and this is one of season 2's better episodes. But to hear the actual story of Ben Franklin being jealous of a farmer making another almanac is insane. Benjamin Franklin had YouTube drama, but in the 1700s, what are we doing here? The beginning of the episode is great, as a family runs over the poor mascot of the New Jersey Devils. It makes sense now how they were able to lose a Stanley Cup against the Kings. I mean, I gotta thank Big Ben for creating the Jersey Devil, I suppose, but oh my god, how can you create something that iconic and that crazy as one of the founding fathers of the country? That's, that's crazy. Either way, the episode is great and everyone lives, except for the poor dog. I don't know why I remember the ending being very different. I thought I remember the dog fighting the Jersey Devil and him running away afterwards. I don't know why I thought that was the original ending. Maybe it was edited? I don't really know. But anyway, Marley and the Devil is going to be a very interesting sequel to Marley and Me. But hey, I can complain. This was a fine episode. 
I'm giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Lost Tapes. Alien. World Domination! This is the episode that terrified my brother when we watched it. And the episode evolves around what happens if aliens bring organisms with them to Earth that evolve into spooky bugs. It's aliens meets Grey's Anatomy, and for some reason, the security guard for this episode reminds me of Tuco Salamanca. Don't ask me why, but when rewatching the episode, I can only see the security guard forcing the bug alien to start cooking meth. But these are some awful nurses and doctors, as they don't even report the horrible marks on this woman's arm, and eventually, she has all these lesions and scars. It's like, okay, are we going to port this to somebody? Hello? She's kind of decaying right before her eyes, and they're like, nah, we're good. I mean, what the heck? She gets a major rash all over her body. Will they not send her into quarantine so she doesn't affect other people? I mean, this is a public hospital after all. What are we doing here, people? The cheesiness for this one is at an all-time high, but for it to use dog footage of Jurassic Park raptor noises is kind of weird to hear. Overall, this episode is goofy, but it's probably in the top three for the season. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked too. I'm giving Alien an 8.25 out of 10. Lost Tapes. Bear Lake Monster. You know, I'm kind of noticing a pattern with Lost Tapes, with the fact that each episode that involves water is kind of bad. The Mormon River Monster is pretty dumb, I'm not gonna lie. The River Monster gets mad at the woman for throwing a phone into a lake. What is he, the Mormon Captain Planet and doesn't want people to pollute his lake? You know at this point, for some of these episodes, they can't just get the story straight, especially when they use the same experts over and over again. I mean, we are near the end of the season. We should at least be able to get more people on this show when we finally have a budget to use. Uh, 4.5 out of 10. Another snooze fest of a water episode. I mean, oh my god. Lost tapes. Dover Demon. For the last episode of season 2, this is quite honestly the weirdest cryptid as it's just a super obscure legend from an event in Dover, Massachusetts that occurred in 1977 for only 25 hours. It's funny how people try to get fake footage of the Dover Demon by creating a fake scene to fool the audience, only for them to count the real monster, and this whole scene reminds you of that one episode of Regular Show where Rigby's scared of the British taxi, or even that one movie Ghost Encounters, and how eventually it all turned out to be real when the people are just trying to mess around and pretend to get found footage. Also, what is the Dover Demon? I remember back in season 1 they said it was like a Bigfoot, but then they say it's something else, it's an alien, no it's a weird humanoid, I mean what is it? I guess it's whatever, whatever it could be. The Dover Demon could be a random cat living in the middle of the woods, who knows? The only sane man here is a cameraman, seeing the warning signs of the Dover Demon and wanting to bail. Also that shot with the monster on the tree as the dude is attempting to fix the camera was honestly a pretty cool shot, and it's used a lot during season 2 especially during the intros for the season, so it does kind of spoil the reveal, but regardless, Dover Demon is a fine ending to season 2. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. If season 1 was the appetizer to the potential that the show could have, then season 2 is the main course when it comes to getting some quality cryptic content. Although this season did have a few missteps, like the Bear Lake Monster and the Death Crawlers, and seriously, what even was the White River Monster in the first place? There were a lot better episodes here when compared to the previous season. Alien, Southern Sasquatch, Jersey Devil, Vampire, and Werewolf were all major hides of the season, and it makes me wonder what future stories can now be told in the next season. I hope they can keep up the pace because if season 3 is nearly as good as season 2, then we're set for a grand finale. What's in Lost Tapes' head? Well, I guess for Season 3, they decided to create their own wannabe SCP Foundation and go the route of Mountain Monsters and create their little world to use and create stories from. They should have done this earlier in the series, but hey, you know what, let's see how it works out. Zombies aren't cryptids, right? They have no relation to any of the cryptids. I mean, sure, I could believe in a bear leg monster, but I draw the line at zombies. I'm shocked that they even got the author from World War Z to be in this episode. It's ironic as, just a few years later, we would get his book created as a full-length movie. And the movie itself was... meh. 
I mean, it was pretty forgettable. I forgot what even happened in the first place. All I remember is that South Park parody. I feel like this episode was created to coincide with the later release of The Walking Dead, which was released in the same year on Halloween. This episode was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. The Nimbus Corporation people are all dumb. I mean, they are useless. I'm giving zombies a 2 out of 10. Here we go with some actual cryptids this time. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is Kraken even a cryptid? It's more like a folklore myth, right? Do myths count as cryptids? Well, I have no idea. But most of these episodes that involve water are usually very bad. The real memorable one was the one with Earl all the way back in season two. Rest in peace, Earl. The charm of the series is that less is more. And sometimes with season three, they try to go above and beyond the previous seasons by showing just a little bit more. Just a little bit more, so they get too ridiculous. Which, for some of these episodes, that concept sort of works. But for the Kraken, it's just really bad effects that stay on the screen for far too long. Another forgettable episode that you should probably just skip. I'm giving Kraken a uh, 3 out of 10. Oh no, they're back again. In this episode, we got the stupid SCP losers returning to cover the truth about what happened to some employees after they disappeared from a quote-unquote oil field explosion. This is another vampire episode, but instead of these vampires lurking in the dark and having hair, they have Twilight Vampire abilities that let them stay in the sun to attack the main characters. Again, these Enigma people are the dumbest people I've ever seen in a TV horror show. They have no idea what's going on throughout the show. Oh, Magic Conch Shell, what do we need to do to get out of the kelp forest? Nothing. Well, for these Strigoi, these are trickster vampires, as they bait the characters into helping them, only to kill them one by one. Well, I think only two people actually die in this episode. But for what it's worth, it's at least entertaining and is so far one of the better season 3 episodes. Even though that really isn't saying much, is it? And don't get me started on the Nimba people, we're gonna get to it eventually, but they just hinder this season. And it feels like this season as a whole really didn't expect to get greenlit by Animal Planet. I'm giving Shirigoi a 4.5 out of 10. Poltergeist. That bitch was in my face. There are things in this world that we will never fully understand. 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 We never wanted answers. Lost Tapes has worked years to build its credibility. Their quote unquote reputation. Working alongside the worst semi professionals in the field, this episode is just abysmal. They had no evidence and they had no Ghost Avengers. Again, I'm tempted to do a retrospect on all of the Ghost Adventure seasons, but that would probably take literal years off my life. Again, if you want to see me do that, comment down below and I'll do it as a celebration for hitting a milestone in my subscriber count. I have no idea. Poltergeist is just a parody of those type of shows like Ghost Hunters or Grave Encounters, but unlike that movie where it's still not bad to watch, the episode is just random. Seeing some poor telepathic kid get bullied by a poltergeist makes me yearn to see just how poor Troy Bolton grows out of his kinetic energy phase to focus on getting a basketball scholarship. These wimpy ghost investigators don't even have the lights off for the investigation. I mean, having the lights off is simple ghost hunting 101. You get more activity in the dark. I mean, have they even ever played a game of phasmophobia before? Come on. These quote unquote ghost investigators really should have packed some smudge sticks. I'm giving Poltergeist a... 2 out of 10. Devil monkey. Gar! Unleash the monkey! Okay, so for the episode Devil Monkey, apparently Tax Force are assigned to hunt for some random crack dealers doing business in the forest of West Virginia. I mean, at this rate, they should have just called the Mountain Monsters crew. They would have easily handled business against those devil monkeys. Oh, 
What do you got, It breaks into another cavern and stuff up on that other side right there. I'm shocked this cryptid wasn't even used in Fallout 76, as it makes sense for the setting. Uh, hey everybody, CocoPow430 here with a post-production edit. Apparently, the devil monkeys don't even exist in West Virginia. They exist in Arizona and parts of the Southwest of the United States. So, my question to Lost Tapes is, did they lie to us? Why did they send this in West Virginia when this could have easily been down in Arizona or somewhere like Colorado, but for some reason they sent the devil monkeys in West Virginia? Yeah, look at this now. I never knew what devil monkeys were in the first place. I thought they were just like, they just made up something for the season, but yeah, they didn't even get the facts straight. Oh my god, Lost Tapes lying to us? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? They got the devil monkeys from Ascension, and just like in the BO1 map, these monkeys are terrifying and really annoying. I mean, sure, apes and chimps are dangerous, it should be left alone, but the devil monkey design, I think, is reused for a later episode that I'll get to. But the ending is just chaotic. I'll just recommend getting to the ending to see what the hell even happens to everybody. A sluggish episode to get through that made me go bananas. Yeah, sorry for that joke. Let's just get to the next episode, shall we? I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 10. Sorry. No! Hey, let's go look at the monkey. Yeti. Good night. Oh, he right just there, took man. off. He didn't just left the broadcast booth. Get back here. This. All right, here we go. This is what I've been waiting for. This episode is the pinnacle of season three for me. As so far, all the episodes have been really bad. But I'm glad this episode went back to its Bigfoot roots and made another good Bigfoot episode. So the Yeti starts off with an entire crew in this ship getting killed off one by one by the Yeti, which makes this Yeti feel like more like an assassin squatch. Being able to lurk on the ship and become a serial killer when chasing down the main characters who decide to invade this random ship when they hear it's been abandoned and mysteriously just docked there is really funny. The Yeti feels like Solid Snake sneaking through the now abandoned ship. I have to give Lost Tapes credit is that they know how to make a good Bigfoot episode. And that's the only thing they know how they're good at. Sometimes the episodes are hit or miss, but one thing they can guarantee is to make either a good or great Bigfoot episode. That's about it. The suspense is great as the Yeti is not messing around. This episode feels like it can fit right in with Season 2. And great job, Lost Tapes. You made a good Season 3 episode. I'm proud of you. I'm giving Yeti a 7.75 out of 10. You exist! Wendigo, American Cannibal. Another highlight from Season 3 is the episode Wendigo. The Wendigo is an interesting episode. On one hand, it's really damn racist in its depiction of the Wendigo psychosis, but the story and design of the Wendigo is well done compared to the other creatures shown in Season 3. The overall episode is good, but the stuff with the Wendigo feels super outdated, even for 2010 standards. But at least they're finally deciding to show more footage of the actual main story compared to the B-roll stuff they usually do to pad the time. The Yeti and the Wendigo episode are the only decent episodes so far in Season 3. Can Lost Tape somehow manage to salvage this season by finishing strong? Let's find out. I'm giving Wendigo a 7 out of 10. Hugh, the Serpent God. This is it, Luigi. You know how I said before how I hope Lost Tapes was able to salvage this season by finishing strong? Yeah, this episode really just crashed the season for me. <laughs> The damn Enigma idiots are back at it again, this time going to Mexico City to investigate these ritualistic deaths from an unknown cult. So now they decide to go into Aztec Gods instead of going with the generic cryptids we are used to with this show. Season 3 is honestly all over the place. It feels like they really didn't expect another season to come out or even to be greenlit by Animal Planet in the first place as you have zombies, Aztec gods, mythical folklore with the Kraken. I mean, what are we doing here? 
This this whole season feels so out of whack that it felt like they were rushed. They decided, oh my god, what can we do? Uh, let's just look up stuff on online and see if it works. Zombies? Eh, not really, but sure, we'll do it. Q the Serpent God? I mean, sure. Let's go to gods now, who cares? But yeah, this episode was really, really bad. I was zoning out during this episode where the private ops were ready to commit crimes across the border and to see the 2012 stuff he talked about for a brief moment during this episode got a laugh out of me. Remember some people were terrified that the end of the world was happening in 2012? Good times. Anyway, the raptor bird snake creature thing looked super goofy. I mean, look at him right now. It just looks so dumb. It looks like a puppet. It seriously looks like a giant puppet with feathers. It's so bad. And the episode was again super boring. Man, maybe they needed a $10 budget instead of a $15 budget. Maybe then these episodes would have been a tad bit better. And again, this is this is this is the funniest part. Because this is the final scene of the Enigma Corporation. Yeah. They're not seen at all again throughout the rest of season three. They were only in three episodes that I could count for. The zombie episode, Sturigoi, and Q. That's it. Only 30% of season 3 had this stupid corporation in it. And again, why even have these people in the first place if they really don't add anything to the season or even the story? I felt like they really should have committed to the bit where if you want to do this, commit to it. Have them be in the background, even if not the main focus of the season or in the uh, episodes. Have them at least be in the background or mention or like be a cleanup crew or something. I don't know. It just feels like they had no idea what they wanted to do with the Namba Corporation. And it feels like wasted space. Like they don't need to be there. Like you can have other people in there. Like you have police officers, cops, firefighters. I said cops twice for some reason. But you get my point. It just gives me such a headache that it feels like this whole season was rushed. And for most of these episodes, they are just bottom of the barrel. I could give season one a break because that was the first season and they're trying out stuff to see what can stick. And again, it did stick for season two. What season three excuse? There is no excuse for it to be this bad and just really, really a chore to get through. I mean, oh my goodness. Q, the Serpent God, feels like the bottom of the abyss when it comes to season three. I can't imagine we get much worse than this. I'm giving it I don't even know, like a 1 out of 10. Sure. Beast of Bray Road. Why st The Ku Klux Klan! We still have two more episodes until we're done. Let's just see how Lost Tapes finishes things off with The Beast of Bray White Road. The episode starts off with militiamen who let reporters in to interview their leader in the heart of the Wisconsin forest, all getting bullied by a Bigfoot? A devil monkey? Honestly, I'm not sure what the thing is supposed to be. So the libertarians who are against the government have a major base of operations set up to do stuff or whatever. Honestly, they never explain it. My god. Again, these people with guns are so dumb in this season, they legit should not even have them. Because they never use them when it matters. The Proud Boys think the feds are out to get them and their proof is legit one of their members getting mauled to death. I mean, he looks like he got mauled to death by a bear. How could he think the government was in on this? I mean, do they think the government controls the bears to eat all the libertarians? That's just ridiculous. So the piece of Bray Road is sort of like a wild canine beast, but could also be a giant Bigfoot, or a devil dog, or even a werewolf. Honestly, these people have no clue what they're talking about. Shocking, I know. But these poor average indie wrestling fans don't realize that it's not the Fed who is after them, but it's said a dangerous beast. And the suit looks like the same one they used for the Devil Monkey, which takes away from the episode for me. I mean, if there's one highlight of this episode, is that these people get messed up. Like, people are getting torn apart and getting eaten. With all that being said, this episode is pretty mid. Although it is a vast improvement over the rest, and makes for a decent watch. I'm giving this one a 5 out of 10. Someday, but not today. This is it. 
We have made it to the final episode of Lost Tapes. After 34 episodes, this is how we end the series. And how did the last episode of Lost Tapes go? There are some conspiracy theories that claim that the reptilians are able to disguise themselves as humans. <laughs> 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 um, oh no. Bloodline on the planet and are part of the bloodline of every U.S. president. Duh, I'm stupid! <laughs> oh no. We could be a food source for reptilians who might consider us to be a lower life form the same way we look at livestock. Oh lord. The reptile people bait ravers into going to their underground raves or to use them for substance. Or something like that. You know, after 11 hours of watching this show straight, it all kind of blends in with each other. Sadly, the Nimba people are back at it again for their final appearance in the show and I'm just kidding. Oh my god, thank god. They're not in this episode. I'm lying. The rave doesn't even look fun to go to. There's nobody there. Like, if you want an underground rave, make it look like an underground rave. Like in Blade. Blade did it better. And that movie came out, what, like, eight years after this season? And to be honest, the laziness and lack of stuff really exemplifies the whole season in a nutshell. Lost Tape started with racism with Chupacabra, and the show, coincidentally enough, ended with racism. Honestly, they could have their alt-right conspiracies. I'll just stick to watching the Turtle Man catch some giant stabby turtles. Yes sir, live action! But that is it. After 34 episodes, 3 seasons, and 11 hours of content later, we have finally watched every single Lost Tapes episode. And was season 3 any good after all? Uh... No. Which is very disappointing to see, as I really like season 2 as a whole. There are a lot more better episodes there in comparison to season 1, and I don't know why they did a 180 when trying to make season 3. They decided, you know what, what if we got all the worst elements of the show and made it 10 times worse? That's season 3. But if you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it as this took me literally a month to make. You're seeing right now all the edited clips that I had to put over and make two separate files for this whole video. Because if I try to do it all together, it would literally crash my laptop. But make sure to leave a like if you haven't already and I'll catch everyone for the next video. Whether it be the Ghost Adventures video or maybe even the Godzilla breaking video. I'll catch everyone in the next part. Later everybody.